Yes, my apologies. So as, as Scott uh, mentioned, in regards to the access that our members will have with CSA, 26 standards plus any updates to those 26 standards. Access is read only. So there will be no printing, no downloading. You can't save the standards on your desktop. Um, your code, AMSA's code, will be valid for one year from program launch, and a new code will be provided in 2024. Our code is good for 100 admin memberships, so that works into one um, use per municipality, and each admin account can assign up to 10 user accounts with access to the standards. So, for an example, if you have a member that wants to sign up, one admin with access, that means you're the admin, the access, you want access to those standards, that means you have nine users left, that is kind of kind of the license and then nine users under that if you yourself as the admin wants to have access to those standards. The other option is one admin. So you are the admin and you don't want access to the standards. You wanna be able to give those 10 accesses to other users within your municipality. A no cost participant partic partnership that allows AMSA to offer discounts for CSA training, resources, and supplementary materials. And you just need to enter these discount codes to get this discount price. So how to access and what this looks like for you. Um, you would contact AMSA by phone or email to request access. Um, AMSA will re request. We will request your information and provide a brief overview. We will send you a follow-up email with instructions, user guides, and more information. So once, I've, I've sent a few of these out already in the last week. Um, it's a welcome email. It's a really good document that kind of shows you how to, how to create your account, how to log in, how to access the, the standards. Um, it's very, very user-friendly. Um, so this kind of just gives you a brief little look at what it will look like when you receive an email. Once you receive your email from any of our client success team here at AMSA, um, we will issue a attachment to your email that gives you a CSA on-demand subscription view access. This will guide you in setting up your account, adding users, as well as viewing the standards. Um, if your municipality would like to have enhanced subscription access guide, um, information in this brochure uh, shows you and guides you on adding more than 10 users, increasing subscription. So AMSA has, has given you the 10 users at no cost. Um, you will see that cost in, in your cart when you put that in. However, once you use the discount code, it is no cost to you. If you want enhanced, that will then cost, cost your municipality money. Therefore, you would just go ahead and, and, and order those on your own. Okay, so can a municipality use the CSA on demand code more than once? So the answer to that is no. The municipality would designate one admin user who would use the code to access the standards collection and assign users. If your organization has already received access, you will be directed to the admin, admin of your municipality. So as an example of John Smith, he is from a municipality and he's already contacted us say he's with, I'm just going to throw a municipality out there, City of Edmonton, and he's already assigned up as an admin user, we then would inform you to contact John Smith at City of Edmonton, where he would add you as a user um, within the municipality. Would a member need to add the standards collection plus the discount to their cart for each user? Um, no, the member would would add access to additional users from their account management page. The store link and the codes are only used to set up the initial administrative account. So once John Smith has that account, you contact John Smith, John Smith can add you within that account because he is the admin user. Is that making sense so far, everybody? Okay, can a member use their existing account? Yes, when the user checks out with the AMSA collected standards, they will be asked to either log into their existing account or create a new one. Can a member change who holds their admin account? Yes, but you would need to contact CSA directly to do so. AMSA is unable to do that. What happens if an admin user attempts to add an 11th user? 
the user would see an error message informing them that they have reached their user limit. To add additional users, they would have to purchase enhanced access. So again, AMSA has offered admin plus nine users or admin plus 10 users. If you go above that, then as, as it states there, you would now go into the enhanced, which means that would be a cost to you. AMSA has a discounted rate. The user would need to contact CSA and pay for their additional enhanced access. So with CSA, um, more information or any access on discount codes, initial access, access, basic account assistance, you can contact AMSA by phone or email, of course, 587-952-2268, as well as you can always email our safety at amsa.net and anyone from our client success team here at AMSA will be able to assist you. If you have technical, issue, technical issues, account changes, website issues, changing account access, we will require you to go directly to um, CSA themselves. Um, there's, they have a website chat function, as well as um, a CSA coordinator, Sophia Jaffer, who's here with us today that will provide our demo to show you kind of how the account and, and logging in works. So at this time, I would like to introduce to you um, Sophia Jaffer, who is the customer service coordinator, who will take us through the how to use the CSA store, setting up an account, and how to access the 26 free standards that AMSA has partnered with. Um, during Sophia's demo, I would ask that you please mute your microphone. And if you have any questions, please raise your hand and we will guide this to ensure our demo runs smoothly. So without further ado, I welcome Sophia Jaffer. You can take it away, Sophia. I will stop thank sharing. Thank you, Carla. And thank you, Scott, as well, and everyone for the invite to your meeting. Um, so as Carla mentioned, the goal today is really to look at the three main steps on how to A, um, access the hidden product link to the CSA store website, um, how to purchase the product with a coupon code at $0, and three, how to create an account to have access to product going forward. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started. Okay. Can everyone see my screen with the Northern Lights? Perfect. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do right here, I'm just gonna try to remove this part. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna come to the URL bar. That's the first step. So I'm at the csagroup.org store homepage. This is the website to our store. Um, the reason why you have access to the store is because our CSA on demand subscription service and our online store are on one website. So the first thing we would do, as Carla mentioned, is that you will be plugging in the URL into the URL bar, this store link right here. Um, not really the store link, but the product link, which is on the store. It is a hidden link. So you will not find it on the store if you're gonna search for it. You will only be able to um, get it once you plug it in right here and it's been given to you by um, Carla. So I'm just putting that in here and it will bring me automatically to your um, collection right here. Now you will all see that it's the price is right stated right on the right hand side. Um, that will not be the case once you check out. So that's the first thing we want to do. You want to plug in the product link on the csagroup.org store URL bar, and it brings you to this page. From here, it's quite simple. You would just scroll down down here and get to add to cart and you would add this product to your cart. So I'm gonna click on add to cart. And once I do that on the top right hand of the screen, you will see that the items have been added to the cart and you'll see 10 items because you have 10 licenses. So in order to check out, you will just click on the cart on the top right of the screen which will bring you to the page that will ask you to plug in the coupon code so that this ends up being at zero dollars. I'll take the coupon code that I received right where it says coupon dis discount code, click it and put it in there. 
and there it is. And then you just click on apply. So once you apply, it will become $0 and you'll be able to check out. Again, it's going to take a few seconds and there it is. So you can see at the bottom, it says estimated total $0. And then you can come right here and check out. And this is the third part of the demo. Once you're checking out, it's going to ask you to create a, an account if you don't already have an existing account. So if you have an existing account, you can come right here and put in all your information where it says option one, I have an account, password. Um, if you don't have an account, you would come right here and you would create an account. So I'm gonna click on create an account just to show you what it looks like. I already have an account for a demo, so I'm going to continue with that, but I want to show you what kind of information you need to um, put in here to register. So first name, last name, country, industry if you want, and then this is really important, the sign in details, because this is what's going to um, that's going to be what we'll need when you log in to the CSA store going forward. So you'll have to put in an email address, which is the email address, I believe that's your work related domain, and then you will create a password, which you will need eight characters or more and contain at least one number. And then you will confirm and come right down here where it says terms. You will have to um, click on all the terms and conditions after you've read them and then create the account. So then when you create the account, you'll get an order confirmation number because you've processed the order and it'll bring you right back to the CSA store where you'll have to log in. So the second, the last step is to log in and access the document. So that's what I'm going to do right now. We're gonna go and I'm going to just go back to the CSC and um, go click back there to be able to log back into the store. This is the CSA store. So I'm back right here where you would be um, once you've created an account or if you already have an existing account, you'd go back to the CSA store. And from here, you'd click on login on the top right. Uh, click on login and you will put in your credentials. So you just created an account. Your credentials will be your email address and the password that you created. So for me, I... I've already, I already have an account, so I'm just gonna plug in my information. It's gonna take a bit of time. I'll come here where it says, I have an account. I will plug in my information and log in. So it'll take a few seconds again, and we should be able to come to the landing page of my corporate account. So once I've logged in, it will automatically bring you to your um, corporate account. Let's give it a few seconds. I'm not sure if it will do this for you all, but for me, I'm working from home today, so it is a bit slow and um, there it is. Okay, so we're good. On the far left, you will see your name up here where it says welcome, right? So here it says welcome Sophia. That means the system has recognized that I have logged in with my credentials. And from here, it's quite simple, you would go right to CSA on demand, top middle. So you don't need to go to subscriptions. You don't need to go into my account on the on the right. You would just go straight to CSA on demand because this is where um, all your documents are going to be. This will bring you to the landing page. This is the interface for the um, corporate account. This is what it's going to look like for you as the administrator. So you will see again, it says, welcome Sophia, my name on the far left, okay? And there are a few things that you'll be able to see that the nine or the other 10 users will not. So if you're the admin on this account, you'll be able to see um, two boxes on the far left. One will say invite users to register, which I'll show you how to do. And the other is the subscription remaining time. So you will receive notifications to remind you that your renewal is ending or coming up soon. I'll show you how to invite users at the end of the demo. We're just gonna take a look at the library first. So you will see five boxes, these five right here, um, as well as the users. So the users that you add onto the account will also see these five boxes. The user on the account will not be able to make any purchases, but they will be able to access the store, which will show them all the products that we have for sale, um, but they will not be able to make any purchases on this account.
Only you, the admin, can make purchases on this account. CSC Advantage does not apply. Uh, my wish list, again, the users on this account can create a wish list. And if they do, you will receive a notification. And that wish list is just to notify you something that they're interested in. So it's for them to send it to you if they decide they want to share this with you. Um, they don't have to share it. It could be their personal wish list. But if you ever see a wish list email, it is coming from here and it is legit. Then there is CSA Learning, which is also something that I think um, Carla mentioned. You can actually purchase courses uh, from CSA, and we do provide a discount code, which I'll show you how to do um, later in the demo because I want to show you where to apply the discount co code if you do want to purchase a course with us. And then last but not least is the library. So I'm going to click on library, um, which will bring us to where all the documents are. Just keep in mind that I actually have full access and not just view access only. So the interface might look a little bit different in terms of options, but I'll walk you through that really quickly. So we'll, we'll click on my library together and um, you should be able to see a bunch of standards come up. And, uh, and on the left hand side, you will see um, the categories. Again, it's a bit slow and this is always slow for me just because um, I think as God mentioned, you have, we have about close to 4,000 standards and I just happen to have access to all of them because I have a full complete collection. So there it is, this is the library and I mentioned there on the left hand side, you have the categories. So if you're looking for something more specific and you kind of weed out the ones that you don't want to, you can come right here and look at it from this way. Um, for example, mechanical industrial has 16. You click on that, only 16 of those under that category will populate right here in the library. But as I mentioned, you know, search is very easy. Uh, this is a very um, straightforward website. You can come right up here where it says my library. You can plug in the product name, designation number, title, or even keywords right here. And you would just click on search and it will populate all the ones that are part of your collection. But again, keep in mind, it will only populate the ones that have been purchased in your collection, not the ones that exist on the CSA store. So it's the one that you have um, part of the collection that will show up here. So the second thing I wanna show you really quickly is how to search um, right here at the bottom, you'll see a bunch of pages and that's another way to look at the different documents. Um, if, if you want a complete list of all the documents that you have in your library, um, if you see, look down right here and find print, it says download list of documents. You can come right here and click on that. And what that will do is it'll open an Excel sheet for you and you would have access to all that information in here that you can keep. It comes quite handy sometimes because it has the, all the description, designation, title, year. You will see you have the ones that are active. So you have access to the documents that are the most current, which will be labeled as status active and the ones that are withdrawn. So even though they're withdrawn, you still have access to them because they're part of the subscription collection. Um, and also the ones in English, and some in French. So if you're looking for French documents, some of them might be available in French as well. So that is the Excel sheet. Everyone can download that. Everyone, including the users on the account. So the nine or 10 people that you've had it. Now I'm just gonna look at how do you actually view the document? It's quite simple. I'm just gonna pick a random spot right here and choose the CSA SB 116. Uh, 2023. So this is the most current one. So the ones that you see in the box are the most current ones. Under status, it says active. That will always be the first document to appear in the library. So if I click on this one right here, it will give me a drop down menu. And the drop down menu, maybe that one's not so great. So let me just try this one. Not this one either. Let's see another one. Um, I want to show you one. So this one is going to provide a drop down menu that provides diff like all the different standards that fall under this category, but these ones are all withdrawn. So these are the previous edition ones. You have access to them, like I mentioned. Uh, some of them might come in French. This one I don't believe is available in French, but you might also see the French version. In this case, if you want to view the most current one, which is the active one right here, 2022, 
I call this the parent standards with the ones that you see in the box. And then when I do the drop down menu, because that's really their functionality, it's provide a drop down menu. I call these the children's standards. Okay. So if you want to open up the parent standard, this one, by clicking on it, it'll just do the drop down menu. If you want to view the document, you have to go on the one right underneath it, which is the child standard. Uh, on, I call this the playground. It just helps me. Um, so if I click on the one on the child standard, it will um, populate the option of viewing it online. So as mentioned, you will see view online only. Um, I have a download button, but please disregard this one because it doesn't apply for you guys. So view online is the way that you will be able to access the document. So just click on view online and that will automatically uh, open up the document for you. And there it is, there is the document. You can view it. I think Carla mentioned all the different do's and don'ts about viewing it online. And that is the document. So I'm going to now go back um, to the last thing I want to show you all, and that is how to add um, users on the account. But before that, I just want to mention something really quickly. If you do use a, often the same documents, you can actually add them into your favorites. So for example, if this document I just opened up is something I often use, I can come click right here where it says add to favorite and just add it to your favorite and it'll turn the little heart, uh, it'll just turn it black. And then when you log in, you will see that it will be under your favorites. So it just makes it easy when you're looking for the document. So now we're gonna look at how to add the different um, users onto the account, the nine or 10 users. Um, really quickly, I'm going to go back to CSA on demand um, landing page because I want to show you how to do it from the link. So we're just going to go back to the main page that I showed you earlier. And there will be a box on the left hand side. And that will be the link we will use to add the users. So we're back to CSA on demand landing page. And this is the link on in the little box on the left hand side. I'm going to click on invite users to register. So if I click on that, it will bring me to the page that will be asking me for their information. So it'll take a few seconds and we should be able to get to the page that will be asking for their name, uh, and name, last name and email address. So when you get to this page, something to really keep in mind as the administrator is the first thing you wanna do is you wanna provide the nine or 10 users document access. So the first thing you do when you get here is come right where it says document access. You would click on document access. And again, it'll show you the same information, but at this point it understands that you wanna give the person you're gonna register access to the library. If you forget to do document access and you just put in their information and add them as a user, when they log in, their library will be empty. So it's very more important to uh, do this step first. So let's say we've done it. Now you can come in, put in the first name, last name, email address, and then just click on add new user. Once you do that, you will see a message pop up in green that says, you know, an invitation link has been sent to that person. That means that person will receive an invitation link that will invite them to create a password. Once they create a password, they'll be able to log in going forward. And that is how you add someone onto the account. If you want to remove access, you would just click remove access and they will be removed from the document access, meaning the library. And I think that's about it. Also, I think Carla, you wanted me to mention how to add um, a coupon for the courses. So we can do that really quickly as well. Um, let's say I want to add, I want to purchase the infection control. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go back actually to, um, to CSA on demand and it'll bring me back to the store page. So if I want to, um, purchase something, I'm going to log out of the account. I'm going to log out of the account and I'm just going to go and show you from the store page how to do it just because it makes it easy because you're not always automatically logged in. So if I log out of here, I'm going to be back to the store page um, and I'm going to show you how to do this really quickly. I'm going to bring this down here. So I'm going to go back to the store page. Uh, I'm not logged out completely because 
I haven't logged out from my account necessarily. I'm just logged out from CSA on demand, but the store has still logged, kept me logged in. So from here, I'm going to search the products. So if I'm looking for the course for infection control, let's just say, um, right here infection control pops up let's see the part one fundamental i want to click on that and that will bring me to the store page once i get to the store page i will pick the correct product i'm looking for so let's say i'm looking for a public training um i would come right here where it says infection control and i would click on that and then i'll add it to my cart and from the cart area i can apply the coupon code so give me a few seconds, just bear with me, please. And it should be able to bring me to, there it is. Okay, so it is now here. Um, I will, it gives you basically all the information. It kind of gives you detail, the details of the product overview outline and all that. Now you can come right here on the right-hand side, choose a location. So if I do virtual, I'm gonna choose virtual. You have different locations. I'm choosing virtual and I'm going to choose a date, let's say April. So there it is. I'm gonna add quantity one, add to cart. And once I add to cart, it's gonna populate one in my cart. From there, I will check out as I would, as I did with the, um, the collection when I first showed you how to do that. Same process. And I'm going to look for my coupon code and see. I'm not sure if it's going to apply my coupon code, but I'm just going to try um, applying it here just to show you all. Um, and this is where it would be. So you have the training right here in your cart. You see it says one, and then this is where you would put your coupon code for the um, to receive a 15% discount. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to apply on mine because I have a demo account, but you should be able to put it right here where it says discount code and just apply it. In my case, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but if it does, then that's great. If not, um, there it is. It removes $90. Okay, so that's good. So it comes up to estimated total $510. And then you would check out. And once you check out, um, you either put in, you know, a credit card information and whatnot. So the process of checking out is pretty easy once you have an account with us and uh, it should be uh, fine for that. And I think that's about it for me, Carla. Was there anything else that I missed or anything you wanted me to add to that? So I do have a question in our chat, uh, Sophia. Sure. Um, what if the individual already has a CSA account? Would they have to create a new password? So mm -hmm. are you, um, Jerry, are you asking if the user that you're adding to your account already has an account? Yes. Okay, yeah. So okay. what if the user, yeah. if, if our admin has um, added a user, account and they have an existing account. Okay, so that's that's a good one. So what happens is it depends on the email that they're using, right? So if they have an existing account and their email is um, linked to the work email, then what would happen if they have a purchase on it, then we would need a new separate email. So personal email for their personal purchase, a Gmail, Yahoo. Um, so what we would do is we would merge that purchase with their personal email and then remove the, uh, the work email so that we can apply it to the, um, your, your collection, like your actual work uh, account. I don't know if that's clear. So it would, we would keep the email, like the one for the work email domain to go with the actual subscription and we would request uh, an email address for their personal purchase. So just, I, I guess, too, as well as, as AMSA in the partnership with CSA, one of the, I guess, kind of stricter sides of things is that each individual, each user or admin must have a municipality address. So I think, Sophia, that's kind of where you're going with. If, you, if somebody has a personal Gmail account um, with a Gmail address, I guess, email address, and then they have, they have a work email, um, would they contact you in regards to saying, okay, I have a personal one, but I also have my work one and you merge those two together, or is it very separate? 
So what would happen is that they need to contact us. Um, they wouldn't necessarily contact me, but they can contact our tech support. And what tech support will do is ask for their Gmail or you know Yahoo email and say, please provide us an alternate email address. And then we could flip them. We can flip their you know their purchases onto their personal email and keep the work email for the subscription only. And once that's completed, then you know then that that'll be fine. They'll be able to access um, the collection, the you know the subscription with work with their you know email from work. Did that answer your question, Jerry? I guess just to confirm, then you're saying if we have purchase standards under our work email. We would have to transfer those to a personal email and only use this subscription under our work email. Exactly. That's correct. Does anybody else have any questions or? Okay, Sophia, I think I think we covered this and we will continue. We'll have this recorded. So if anybody needs to go back and, and just to get a visual, but please know that once you do reach out to AMSA, the welcome email as well as the user guides that will be attached is a really, really good step-by-step, -step, really user-friendly for you. And of course, AMSA, we're always here to answer any questions. Uh, that you may have. So at this time, I first of all want to thank everybody for coming today and attending and, and learning the why of CSA and hopefully you all reach out and, and get some access to this. I think it's really good. And again, thank you to Sophia for your time for doing this demo and training. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Really appreciate you inviting me. Enjoy. Thanks, Sophia. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day.